I know. Say good morning. How you feel today? Say good morning for Mr. Peaches. Good morning. Yeah, they're fussed and I haven't let all my chickens out yet. So yesterday, welcome back to the channel. We appreciate you being here. So I'm gonna go ahead and answer a few questions um, on this whole egg debacle. <laughs> I went through my emails yesterday, so I finally went through, and you know as well as I do, over the last probably two to three weeks, everybody and their mama has been concerned about chicken eggs, the prices, not only that, now we have a concern about feed. So since so many of you are asking and want solutions to your problems, I'm going to give you the best advice that I know how, um, and it's going to be the same, a lot of it's going to sound the same that I have been giving you for the last almost nine years about chickens here on YouTube, Facebook, and even Instagram too. So we're just gonna kinda go over the basics. A lot of you may know a lot of this, but there's a lot of new folks that are getting birds this year. And there's a few things that you need to know about chickens and feeding them. Okay, so I'm gonna step back here away from the dogs and the chicken coop and, what, and the geese and everything so you can hear me just a little bit better. If you see a deer, a bear, or Bigfoot, let me know. No barn cats down here, <laughs> at least not yet. So here's the deal. So we've been raising chickens for many years now and there are learning curves that a lot of people need to realize as you go along. There are different protein levels of food or protein levels in your chicken feed that you need to be aware of. Never go below a 16% protein base for your laying, your layer feed. That's your layer feed you'll notice that you're gonna see a difference in protein from your starter, which is your baby chicks, when it gets down to your grow out, if you use that. I typically just wait and go straight to um, your layer feed because baby chicks, excuse me, the mama, mama birds that are with the baby chicks, if they're with them, can eat the baby, what I call baby food. It's your, it's your starter grower. It typically has a little bit higher of a protein, somewhere between like 18 up to 20%. But here's the thing, your layer hens, once they get to the point where they are at laying age, which is typically about 18 to 20 weeks, that's when a lot of breeds that you guys have or are going to be getting are going to start typically laying eggs. Remember, every single breed is different and do remember that every single hen is different. It's just like I'm every woman, okay? <laughs> I'm not gonna sing that this morning, I'm, it's too early. But, okay, nothing's around me, nothing's around me, okay. I'm watching for bucks. We have a lot of bucks right now, okay? So anyway, um, here's the deal. I use Tucker milling feed for almost all of my animals. I have made videos on Tucker milling and their feed and how wonderful it is for, gosh, probably six to seven years. I drive up to three counties <laughs> to go get our feed or my husband will go get it and we get a bunch at one time and that's how we do. The most convenient place for me to go get my feed is the place that a lot of you all are questioning. I don't buy animal feed from them. I'm not gonna say that I have it in the past because that's not true. If I'm in a hardcore pinch on something in my life, then of course I'm gonna do what's best for my farm. But once a week or twice a month or something, you know, it depends on the situation. We go to a small, farm supply store, individually and family owned, uh, you know, father, son type situation, okay? I will also shop at my local or a local co-op. Please see if you have a co-op. I, you know, a lot of people that are getting into these things, you need to know your different options for places that you can go and buy all kinds of different things that you're gonna need for your birds, your goats, or whatever. You don't just have to go to one place. So you need to investigate all the different places um, that you can go to get different things that you may need. I used to blend my feed myself, but honestly, I go through so much feed so fast um, with so many of my birds. It, and, and with the way the prices were and are fluctuating, depending on what you're getting, it is easier for me to stick with Tucker Milling and I've never been displeased. So that is what I typically feed. Now I will supplement my birds with all kinds of things and I have a ton of videos on that 
we can talk about that. Uh, I have um, over like 1600 videos and a whole playlist of chickens and I need to update that. I know it's a lot to do, but anyway, here's the deal. I feed Tucker Milling, never had a problem. The reason you see people like me and maybe you too, water glassing eggs in the spring and into the summer is because we anticipate there being a major or a complete fall off of egg production due to molt and due to winter months and less daylight. Hens have to have 13 hours of daylight. I just did a video two weeks ago. Uh, James and I talked about eggs and egg production. You can, I'll put it, I'll put it somewhere or in the description down there or in the pinned comment. Uh, we talked about birds and I talked about how they stop laying and all of these things. Now, did I have a complete stop in laying uh, from my chickens? For about two, two, two to three weeks, yes, I did. Yes, I did. And here is why. This is, before we get into talking about potential tainted feed and the options that you should look into or what I think, here is the deal. So here is what I want you to know, regardless of any feed situation. If you have older birds, they are mo more likely to stop laying for a long time in the winter than some of your newer girls. For the last two years, I haven't really been adding a lot of new birds to my flock because I have so many, okay? I have a lot of birds, I have eight. So, you know, what I try to do is just work with what I've got because a lot of times it's enough for me and it's enough for me to water glass or to put away or it's enough for my customers. So I kind of, over the last two years, you know as well as I do with how life has been crazy for all of us over the last two years, I didn't go and get like, 12 here, 24 there, 36 here, 72 there, new baby chicks in the spring or in the winter. Now I've had some girls give me uh, new babies and raise them a couple of times. So I just worked with that. But here's what I want you to know. I showed you Thomas uh, here at the beginning of the video, my sweetheart. Uh, I, the reason I put him in the video is because Thomas, I got Thomas five years ago today. He was part of uh, a birthday present and uh, <laughs> little baby chicks. So, um, this is my point. I have a lot of birds that are five to seven, eight years old. I've got a couple of hens that look beautiful. They look like something that would come out of a magazine. Um, I'm not absolutely positive that they're laying eggs right now. In fact, I'm going to say they're not because they're older. If you have younger birds that you got in the late spring or summer, they are more likely to, if they were already laying, or if they were less than 18 months, they were probably giving you some eggs already. They're probably already laying. And they will likely be the ones that first come back to laying. So here's what I'm saying, long, long story short. If you've got a lot of older birds, I'm gonna say three years and older, even maybe two years and older. By the time they get to that age point and they've been giving you a lot of eggs and you get a hard winter hit, hard molt hit in the early fall, then you have the daylight shorten. Yeah, they're not gonna give you a whole lot of eggs in the winter. So I want you to evaluate that just for going forward, regardless of what you feed, regardless of how all this shakes out with this feed debacle or whatever's going on with that, um, you need to know that. So wh what? why does that matter? Well, that means you've gotta change your game. Like on many of my videos and the one that we even talked about with, with James standing here smiling by the chicken coop, we don't do heat lamps. They are dangerous. You're just gonna burn your house down. You're gonna burn your coop down. We don't do that. We don't do supplemental lighting. I've made videos on that for years. We're not gonna get into that debate. You do what works best for you, but we don't. So again, there's another moment of my birds aren't gonna give me a whole lot of eggs. I better make sure that I water glass or I put some away or you know what? I may have to bite the bullet and come Thanksgiving, if I want deviled eggs, I may have to go buy some from the store. That's just the reality of living in a chicken world, folks, especially when you have hens that are older than say 18 months, two or three years. That's just what happens. But here's what I want you to do, and I want you to think about this, and I'm not trying to encourage you to push your hens, but if you really wanna test and see uh, the situation with feed, especially right now, because my hens right now, I, I, like I said in my video, um, when we started hitting the 1st of January, my girls started just popping eggs like crazy. It's like they, they busted out. They're like, I'm coming up. I mean, they were like doing it. So right now, at a minimum, I'm getting anywhere from 50, a minimum 15 eggs 
up to over 30, 36 eggs a day, okay? That may be all my girls are gonna overall give me because like I said, I have a lot of older girls and this is, I kind of let them go to retirement here. But if you wanna, if you wanna increase the possibility of egg production, if you wanna push them through molt, if you wanna do all of these things, which happens in the early fall, you have to up their protein. I showed you the bag of the Tucker milling earlier and I showed you the tag, the bag and the tag, because I want you to look at what's in the contents of that feed. If you are questioning your feed, you need to take, I'm gonna say, take that and compare it. Go look at what is on your tag. Go see what the combinations are and try to compare them to other things. If you are ever dissatisfied with a product, you absolutely need to contact the place in which you are buying and you need to urge them to do something about it or to investigate it. it. You know what I'm saying? They need to contact their vendors. So when I went to Tucker Milling a couple of years ago, I went to Alabama. I was invited to come tour the entire facility. They make their feed right there on the spot and they ship it. Uh, they put it on barges and they ship it up the river and all these awesome things. So I know where my feed is made. It is made there with Tucker Milling, but that's not always the case with lots of different places. So who's, who's making what? What are their names? What is the vendor? What is the vendor? What is the combination? But if you're dissatisfied, here's what you need to do as a personal test. Number one, you gotta up the protein. I've talked about how a lot of times to get my birds through molt or through a cold season, I will up the protein to at least a 22% protein. All the other things are great. You have to have a healthy mix for your birds. But the bottom line is, is you gotta get the protein up. Okay, if they're not laying for you right now, which they should be, I mean, my gosh, we're almost into February. The days are definitely longer. I know it's cold, but you should be getting some eggs right now. It may not be a whole lot, but you should be seeing something. Up the protein. I'm gonna suggest you go to at least a minimum of a 22% layer feed, 22%. If you really wanna test it, and if you really wanna find out, I recommend that you buy game bird layer. A lot of these game bird layer feeds are for um, quail. I give it to my quail and I give it to my turkey. So I have it here all the time. And I can tell you, sometimes it can be a little bit more expensive, but it will definitely put your girls into production a whole lot faster than a 16%. See, I stuck with a 16% because I've got enough birds to give me personally enough eggs overall, so I'm okay. But if I was pushed or concerned, the first thing that you need to do is change the content of the protein. Now, you can add other supplements to that, right? You can do things such as, well, everybody loves Boss, which is your black oiled sunflower seeds. They have a high protein, but that is a treat. That is a, a mix-in, that's a supplement. That's not an absolute feed. Um, you can also try to feed uh, catfish pellets. I have a whole video on that, higher protein. Remember, these are treats. This is not their absolute feed, but it's to help stimulate a higher production of eggs because they're gonna be getting a higher amount of protein in their diet. You can also do, which I know is tough right now because of all the debacle with dog food and cat food, dog food and kitten chow or cat chow typically has a higher protein. I've done that through molt, for example, to push them through or to help them in a slow time. You can also do things such as mealworms. So you have to investigate what your budget is and what your girls typically flock to and what you wanna do. But the bottom line is, regardless of whether it's molt, regardless if it's uh, shorter days, regardless if it's a cold spurt, by the time you really get into January, which we are almost into February, the reality of you should be getting some, some eggs by now. Especially if you bought birds in the last year, you've got some younger hens, um, they should be giving you some eggs starting about now. That is the typical and average situation for me, and that is the average situation for just about everybody I know and have known that has had birds. Let me give you another point of advice, which I know you all may or may not know. Um, you wanna make sure that your coop 
is really cozy. You want to make sure that the nesting boxes are cozy. I have noticed in off season and in good season that if I had something go on in the, I, I was, I didn't put in fresh pine shavings or the nesting boxes needed to be cleaned out. There's poop everywhere. Um, it just didn't look like a good situation. Sometimes it's almost like they go, you expect me to put my booty in that? I mean, I know it's a chicken, but I'm telling you, they've got attitudes and they do say, I've heard them say that. So I want to encourage you, especially right now, Hopefully you're getting some weather breaks wherever you are. We are. I mean, we like this morning we're 27 degrees, but this afternoon we'll be 51. That's a great opportunity to put it at least at a minimum. Scoop out the nesting boxes. Put in some fresh pine shavings. I prefer pine shavings. I'm about to put down two new bags of pine shavings right now because it's been wet. It's been cold. Um, so they deserve... A little bit of fresh bedding now it may only last a couple of days but that's why you have to keep up with these things so i encourage you to keep your coops and your nesting boxes as fresh as you possibly can um, despite what method you're using in your coops i don't use deep bed method deep bedding method i despise it it doesn't work good here in the south in my area it doesn't work that's another whole video or five but i do try to freshen up and keep things clean as possible for my girls I just put down fresh pine shavings about a week ago, but between the mud from all the rain that we get in our area, them going in and out, you wouldn't know. So you have to keep refreshing, giving them some fresh bedding, things in the nesting boxes, just all of the above, okay? They really like an occasional cleanup. Every girl does. So I want you to see, this is, I only used half a bag on the inside because I'm gonna do the other half on the outside right as they pop out of the coop right there at the baseline of the run i like to put some bedding or even straw or old hay will work as well just a quick little layer cleaned it up cleaned up around the door i'm putting down some layers now i will tell you my silky chalet doesn't have any nesting boxes my bantams my banies my silkies whatever they don't use nesting boxes. They really don't. I have a few other breeds in here that are starting to lay. They're gonna be transferred to the other coop in about two to four weeks. So they'll just go over with, with the big girls because they've grown out with the silkies. But hey, guys, I'm telling you, a little bit goes a long way. So this is what I wanna show you. So this is also Tucker milling, really easy. This is quail gang bird starter complete feed the reason i had this as starter is because i had my baby pulch remember I've, I've had a bunch of well a few last year and this year together i've had a bunch of baby turkeys hatch here at the farm so this is what i feed them okay this is what i feed all my baby chicks yes i do you can see here quail turkey pheasants and i want you to look right there protein 28 percent so I'm telling you, as soon as you bump it, okay, as soon as you bump it, you, if you don't buy Tucker Milling, that's up to you. If you can't find it, I know a lot of it may not be sold in your area. But the point is, is I want you to bump up your feed, at least a couple of bags worth. It doesn't have to be permanent. You're not trying to wear your girls out. But if you want to push them out of some funky town and get them some good feed, there you go. Try something like this. And like I said, you may have to change brands. Okay, so just to help you out, if you're having trouble with your feeds, depending upon where you're buying them, the vendors that you need to look into or contact, Google, investigate, whatever you want to do. I'm just giving you a boost here as a, as a jump start. It is, I've got them for you, Cargill, Purina, Compana, TSP Nutrition. I will put that down in the description below investigate them google it call them ask questions like i said you are not bound to buy any particular thing from any particular place find out where your co-ops are find out what rural king is offering you find out what your local farm supply is offering you if you want to go and mix your own food from a feed mill then go ahead and do that too ask questions that's the bottom line is find out what what are they using where is it coming from how are they blending it um look at the tags on the bags are you buying a 16 percent minimum baseline of protein 
you probably are. I'm gonna guess that you most likely are because that's the common baseline. But what's in the bag, I don't know. What I can tell you is even with uh, here at my farm with the feed that I've been using for many, many years, the company has been excellent to me, our family, our viewers, and has been absolutely wonderful to the Great Appalachian Homesteading Conference. I have never had an quote, a quote, unexpected situation. I've had slowdowns and I've had pickups and they're all very realistic in line in terms of our weather, our timeline, and with the age of my birds. I don't expect a seven-year-old hen to lay me 320 eggs a year. That's just not the reality. That's like expecting an 80-year-old gal to produce twins. I <laughs> know once in a blue moon, you know, we can get into the Guinness World Book of Records and we can find one somewhere, but the odds are it's probably not your mammal. So I'm just saying, stay cool, take action, ask questions. Guys, if you're not happy, be your own evaluator. Ask the questions for you. No one's going to raise your children and keep your farm and love on your hens like you do or you are. So you've got to do the homework and be willing. I really encourage you to make a plan for perhaps maybe once a, once a week to maybe twice a month. Find somewhere that even if it's a little bit further out, make a point. It works for us. Make a point to go get the best and bring it back. Because you need to also, let me say this and I'm shutting up. I want you to look at the prices. Some of these feeds that are in question are 40 pound bags. Some online people are paying $15 for 40 pound bags. I'm paying $15 for 50 pound bags. All of my Tucker milling that you just saw, the two bags, that's just two bags of all that we've got. Those are 50 pound bags. So if you're paying a huge price for 20 to 40 pound bags, you're getting ripped off because there's competition out there that even if it's just a dollar more, but you're still getting 10 more pounds. So not only should you evaluate your tags and call these places and see what's in the mix, talk to people, whatever, but what are you paying for the amount that you're getting? That's pretty important too. Hope you find this video helpful. We're gonna get to work today. We have a, um, a lot of videos coming your way and we appreciate you being here. If you have any more questions, let me know. Uh, really thinking about a lot of you out there. Um, hang in there, try to get that protein up. Switch gears, get the protein up. You'll get eggs. You will get eggs. You do the things that I just told you to do. It may not be immediately overnight. Give it a week or two. Spring's coming. You're gonna get eggs. We appreciate you. Like, subscribe, and share, and share, and we will see you on the next video.